Good morning, New Heart Christian Center. It's such a blessing to be before you once again, one more time. We're coming before you just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I believe we have another wonderful, awesome lesson this morning. And before we go into prayer, I want to go ahead and give you the title, The People Sin Against God. The People Sin Against God. Lesson text, Exodus 32, 1 through 14. Our golden text is, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, have not forsaken them that seek thee. Psalms 9 and 10. Minister Ramos is going to lead us in prayer this morning. Amen. To God be the glory. God, we're honored to be in your presence once again this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us and all that you are yet to do. You are our healer, our redeemer, and our deliverer, Father God, and we thank you for that. And Lord, as we receive this message, Father God, let let us apply it to our lives and then share it with others, Lord, in love, Father God. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, get your glory in this service. Yes, Father. And get your glory with our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. The people sin against God. Lesson 32, uh, lesson text Exodus 32, 1 through 14. So our aim today, our facts, to see clearly that sin is offensive to God. Sin, if it's anything that breaks God's heart, is sin. Uh, Principle, to understand how God responds to the sin of his people. Sin has to be dealt with. God has to respond to it. Application, to anticipate God's response to our own sin and what we need to do about it. So introducing a lesson, when sin is mentioned as a topic of conversation or debate, reactions vary from brokenhearted guilt to defensive denial. Maybe as we start to study this topic, we should silently go to God in prayer and confess our sin to him. And so basically this lesson, the introduction to this lesson is saying that there's two basic responses to sin. Uh, the response can be brokenhearted guilt, true godly sorrowfulness, uh, true repentance, or it can be basically defensive denial means, in other words, justifying, justifying what uh, is not right to God, justifying what offends God. And as we go into the lesson, we read so much about the people in the past lessons that they get the commands from God, they respond to God, and they say, all the things that you have told us to do, we will do it. We will do it. And, you know, sometimes we have to be careful not to speak so fast because we need to really consider that which we are saying. We need to consider that which we are agreeing to. They told Moses and they told the Lord. They made an agreement with him that every command that you have given us, we will do it. But when we get to this week's lesson, we'll find now that there's kind of a, a stark difference between what they said last week and now what they're saying this week. And so let's jump into that this morning. Let's jump in that. So uh, Exodus 32 and 1 starts with, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. I, I, let me stop right there. When the people saw that Moses delayed, now that right there in that, that first sentence, that first phrase, there's already error in that sentence. They said that Moses delayed. Not, not that he's up in the mountain uh, experiencing the glory of the Lord, it, having a time with God, getting instruction from God, experiencing God's power, but they took it as he delayed to come down. And with that being said, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods. Oh, my God. Up. Get up, get up. They said to Aaron, they said to the priests, up, make us gods, which shall go before us, just like Moses. Mm -hmm. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, this is something else 
that's the error. I'm going to let Minister Ramos talk about this when I'm done. We would not what has become of him. So some of the errors that we're finding here is that they misperceive Moses' experience with God. They, they misperceive his experience up in the mountain, the, the glory that he's getting. They misperceive that uh, by saying that he delayed to come down. And, and I would say this, that sometimes folks don't understand what God is doing in your life. They, they don't understand when you're on your spiritual high. They don't understand when you are experiencing God's glory. They may not understand it. Sometimes it is easy to be misperceived perceive when God's favor and God's glory is over you. And so what happens after that? Now they say to Aaron, make us gods. Oh my God. Make, make just oh, the gods like they, like he speak to Moses, make us gods that will also speak to us. So Minister Ramos, I want you to go ahead and talk a little bit about your, your thoughts and what the Lord has pressed upon your heart concerning this scripture. Thank you, Elder Duke. So one thing we do recognize in the very last sentence is that we want not what has become of him. Mm -hmm. So as we remember, Moses didn't go in that mountain alone. No, no. And I believe that they would have received a message from any one of them if Moses had died in the mountain right. or something would have happened to them. They would have received instruction after that from someone that was in the mountain with him. Yes. But then they, like you said, spoke to Aaron, who was supposed to be over them. That's right. They commanded Aaron to make us other gods. So they were completely out of line. And then we also have to understand that they, they also erred in saying that Moses was the one that brought them out of mm -hmm. Egypt. Talk, talk. So That's many it. times in life, we give the wrong person credit for delivering us, healing us, saving us, bringing us out. We want to make sure the doctor gets their credit. Mm. We want to make sure talk, our talk. parents get their credit. Yes, but we always forget to thank God thank who has yes, delivered us. So we want to definitely recognize where they have erred in their conversation. Like like he said, yeah. last week they were saying, oh, whatever you want us to do, we'll do it. Now, because Moses has delayed 40 days, he's still on the mountain, all of a sudden now their speech has changed. That's right. And they want to serve other gods. That's right. That, that, that's awesome because they didn't get the experience that Moses got. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing they want to do is that they want to backtrack Come from on. the commitment they made to God. It was them that said, we will follow your commands, which was one of the commands. If you go back to Exodus 20 and 4, God laid it out for them. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. What do we see here? They're asking for Aaron to make them other gods. That was another command. Now that they're falling in, uh, they're falling against. He says, you shall not make any graven images in the next verse. You shall not make anything in the likeness of me or that represent me. And now, not only are they asking for other gods, but now they're asking for Aaron to make them gods like the God of Moses. They, they want to have that same experience, but uh, they want Aaron to go and make them of God. They want Aaron to make them an image that they can call God, an image that, that will represent, they think, the God of Moses. Um, th th there's a lot of truth to this because basically they want Aaron to go make them an idol, an idol. So they want to uh, bring God down to a physical being. They want to bring God to something that is materialistic. You catch the cold word here, materialistic, how uh, at times in our life we have to be careful that we don't make material our gods. Amen. We don't make material, uh, materialistic things be the Lord over our life. How do we make it be Lord over our life? Sometimes anything that gets more of your attention, it gets more of your heart, it gets more of your sacrifice, then the Lord, it becomes an idol. It becomes something that you worship. And because the people didn't understand what was going on with Moses, they wanted to have an experience themselves. But what type of experience they wanted? Uh, it wasn't so that they just wanted to know God more. 
they was caught up into the doings right. of God. Right. And that's another thing we have to be careful of, uh, that we don't get so caught up into the acts and the doings of God until we totally just all together forsake God himself. What else do we see in this verse? We see that they justify. They justify the way they feel. And how did they justify? They said, because we don't know what become of Moses. Right. We don't know. We, so it basically, it makes them feel better about the wrong that they're doing. They're justifying because they cannot put their hand on why Moses is up in that mountain that long. They, can't, they don't understand why he's up there 40 days, as last week said, and 40 nights. They don't understand it. So the first thing they say, we, we, we cannot, we don't know what has become of him. So now go make us God. And so is that our first reaction when we don't understand what God is doing mm. is to go ahead of God and do our own thing and make other things our Lord and worship other. And this is exactly what we see happening here. Uh, let's look at the, the next verse. And it says, and it says, verse 2, Minister Ramos, it says, and Aaron, let me just say, and Aaron. The, and Aaron. Now, if you remember last week, Moses put Aaron in charge. That's true. And her. He put them in charge. Her, H-U-R, they mean a, a woman. Aaron and her, Moses' father-in-law. He put them in charge to watch over the people and to handle any of disputes of anything to judge righteously while he was up in the mountain. And so with keeping that in mind, you go here to verse 2, and it says, And Aaron said unto them, Ooh, I, I, I need to just slow that down for a minute. They go to Aaron, the one who's supposed to know God, the one who's supposed to be Moses' right hand, mm -hmm. the one who's supposed to know better, more than anybody else. What, what says he would action to the call of the people? Listen to this. Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings, mm, which are in your ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Oh, so we see Aaron now is a compromise. He's responding to what they're asking for. Uh -huh. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Minister Ramos, I want you just a little bit to talk with me on the actions of Aaron right quick, mm -hmm. of him compromising. He, he opened the door by him saying, break off the golden earrings that opened the door for an offense and a compromise against the command of God. Amen. And like you read um, from the beginning, that was a direct offense to God. Mm -hmm. um, but Aaron kind of uh, has the same character of so many men of God that we see today, unfortunately, because we'll open up churches based upon the feelings of people and their yeah. emotions, and then we will preach only what pre pleases mm. Don't say that. the people. Don't say that. Mm -hmm. And so Aaron, as they are bringing him the gold and the jewels and satisfying the need of the people, Aaron has now lowered himself, like you said, to now a direct offense mm. against God. So we... we Okay, we as men and women of God have to make sure that we do not compromise with the people. That is not our assignment. Our assignment is to be in obedience and to respect the covenant that God had with us. Last week, God came in a cloud also to speak to the people where they could see what was under his feet. And he right. talked to them directly. That's right. So to, for them to immediately change, as we're going to see later, that God said that they turned aside quickly mm. within a month's time or 40 days, a little yeah. bit more than a month. Now you're already serving other gods, even though I spent intimate time with you, talking with you. Now, because you don't know what's going on with the man of God, you have decided to turn against me <laughs> and to uh, go to the yeah. one that was in charge mm -hmm. and get your needs met by golden images and statues. So they were in direct offense to God on this. 
direct offense, and it gets even it gets even deeper. Verse four says, not only does he tell them to to give them their gold, give him, but he says, and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. Ooh, my God. My God. If you want to pull, I, I just want them to hear this. Uh, Exodus 25, you've got your Bible next to you. So, so uh, I want them to hear this. He fashioned it with a graving tool. N- any, anything else, but he, he fashioned it with exactly with what God told him not to do. What does Exodus 20 and 5 say? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, Ooh. visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Back up one verse. Two. Back up one verse. Mm-hmm. Thou Four. shalt not make unto thee any graven Ooh. image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Did you hear that? Or Sunday that school. is in earth beneath, <laughs> nor that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not make unto me. Any graven image. Mm-hmm. And what does verse 4 says here? It says that, and he received them, and after he had made, uh, he received them and fashioned it with a graving tool. Wow. Direct disobedience. Direct offense against the Lord. Now, the problem with that is that somewhere in the thought process, they were considering what they were doing to be in the name of the Lord. Mm. They were considering what they were doing to be for the Lord, but they was acting in direct disobedience. You know, you, we, we got to be careful that we don't get so caught up into the work of God until we're totally disobedient to the word of God. And a lot of folks, they're so caught up on, I'm, I'm, pre, I'm this, I'm an apostle this, I'm missionary this, I, I'm evangelist this. None of that stuff means nothing if you are totally disobedient to the word of God and whatever God has spoken to you. You know, you've got some pastors who have started churches and the Lord told them not to start a church. But they're so caught up in the work of the Lord. They're so caught up in the things of God until they don't have the Lord himself. We see, this is what's happening. Aaron, he, he fashions it with the graven tool after he had made it a molten cow. Now he makes these images. He falls into the request of the people. I, I just got a question for you. Is it easy or is it hard for you to stand for the truth? Come on. Somebody got to stand for truth. Even if you got to stand all by yourself. Somebody has to stand for the truth. Aaron, with a company of many people, he had the truth. But he ignored the truth to fall in to the desires of the people. We live in a world now. That if you're speaking the truth, you're not popular. Right. You're speaking the truth, you're irrelevant. But somebody has to stand on the truth. Somebody has to stand up for what is right. Join in the fight. Be a soldier in the army of the Lord. Aaron, he falls into the call of the people. And listen to what they said. These be thy God. O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So now, he gives credit to an image rather than the Lord himself for bringing them out of bondage and bringing them out of the land of Egypt. So what does this, what category does this fall in in the commandments that God told them? God told them, thou shalt not, what? Have no other gods before me. Hmm. Thou shalt not. See, they made a golden image. But what images do you make in your life that goes against this command? God says, I'm a jealous God. I'm not going to share you with nobody else. I'm a jealous God. What, what type of images did we make in our life that gets in the way of our relationship with God? I, I want you to think about it. 
I want you to think about it because this, this particular lesson is about going to God in repentance. That whatever it is, you can go to God and repent for sinning against him. So, let's look at verse 5. It says, and when Aaron saw it, Ms. Ray, I'm going to have to let you take this one. This, this, this is heavy right here. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Oh, my God. So he builds an altar. He's already made graven images. But now he's got to make a place to worship it. Ooh, he's got to make a place to worship what he's made. So you couldn't just make the image. But now you've got to make a place to worship it. Minister Ramos, go ahead. My goodness. Okay, so uh, reverse back to verse 4 really quick, that last sentence. These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So now he is accompanying that these gods are the ones who delivered them out of Egypt. Just a second ago in verse 1, it was Moses. Now he said these gods, which he literally just fashioned. He just made these gods, and he's already saying that these are the ones that delivered us out of Egypt. So I'm just saying, they weren't there last week. He didn't have these graven images last week. All of a sudden, right. now they're the ones who are being credited right. for delivering them out of Egypt. And then he has taken the exact same things that they would do to God first, worshiping God, making sure there was a sacrifice, making sure that there was an altar. Now he's twisting it and then using it toward these other gods, that same worship that we have toward God, now we have defiled the name of God, and we have now worshiped and served other mm. gods. So we have to be careful with that. We can create temples. That's we it. can create all kinds of things in the name of God, but we're not worshiping God. That's we're right. serving idols. So be not, be not misunderstood in that, because yes, the Bible says God is not mocked. Mm -mm. Whatsoever you sow, that you, you shall also, also reap. reap. Mm. My God, that's awesome. Did you hear what she said? She said, you can build temples, you can do this, you can do all of that. You know, you do it in the name of the Lord, but you're not doing it for the Lord. Mm. You're doing it in his name. There was a later scripture in Matthew said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Never knew. I never, I never knew you. It, it will be a sad thing to do all of this stuff in church. It will be a sad thing to do all of this in the name of the Lord, and the Lord never knew you. We see uh, just an idea of this happening here in this lesson. These people are far and far from God. Their actions are proven that they are far from the Lord. And their worship, their worship is polluted. Their worship is uh, nasty. Their worship is dirty. They offer sacrifices. They offer burnt offerings but it is not pleasing to the Lord. The Lord, he, he would rather for us to be obedient than to sacrifice. That's more important than anything else. He yeah. would rather have obedience. And we see that, and they rose up early in the, on the next day. They offered burnt offerings, meaning that they worshiped. They gave their offerings. They brought peace offerings, basically trying to justify the wrong. And then what happens after that? The people sat down to eat, drink, and they rose up to play. Wow. All of that meant was that after they worshiped, they began their immoral activities. They rose up to play means they did a lot of immoral um, activities. I'll put it that way. Things that were not godly. Things that they learned probably from Egypt they begin to go back into the ways of that which they come out of. And that is usually the enemy's tactic, is to bring you so far out there to take you back to what you come out of. Because if he can get you to go back to what you come out of, he can get you to turn around. He can get you to forget everything that the Lord has bought you from, everything that the Lord has delivered you from. Amen. And so they rose up to, to eat, drink, and then they rose up to play. Amen. They rose up. So, so now it's getting worse. 
not, not only do they're serving other gods, not only are they worshiping other gods, but now they're just totally sinning against God. One thing always leads to another. One thing, because if you can, if you can get God off your mind, if you can get God out your heart, you'll do anything. And this is what we find happening with Aaron and the children of Israel. But the most, the most outstanding thing about this is that the one that Moses leaves in charge is the very one that falls in to the demands of the people. Aaron should have known better. But because of what was in him, he was curious. He wanted to see exactly how this would feel, what this would look like if we got our hands into this. So saints, be careful about what we make idols, what we uh, put in front of God in our lives. So uh, it gets so bad, Minister Ramos, mm -hmm. that Moses is having a good time on the mountain. <laughs> he having church up there. Amen. Uh, he having, he's just having a Holy Ghost fit up on that mountain. And it got so bad that God told him, hey, man, you got to leave the mountain. Yeah. You got to come on down, my, uh, Moses. There's trouble in the lane. There's trouble in Zion. I got to get you to come on down off that mountain because you need to see what's going on down in the camp. And so God tells him, verse 7, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Who corrupted themselves? They corrupted, not the devil. People got to stop lying on the devil. The devil, he, 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 he didn't do it. You corrupted yourself. Yeah. Because what was in you, it was already in you. You corrupted yourself. The Lord said it. They corrupted themselves. They corrupted themselves. So they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. So the Lord re uh, reinstates to Moses that they have turned from the way that he has commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed. So they made a graven image. There's three commands that they totally just disregarded. Mm -hmm. They made a graven image. They served another god. Um, and uh, they worship another god. They, they did all of those things. And God said, I will have no other god before me. Bow down not to uh, any other god. That's exactly what they did. And then he says, they sacrificed thereon too. And they said, these be your gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up. So God's telling Moses everything that they have done. So after Moses come down from the mountaintop, now he has to go down to deal with the people. Right. I, I, I would just like to say, most of the time, after you have an experience with God, there's always something. After you come off your mountaintop, now you got to go back down and deal with. There's something, I'm telling you, if I don't know if I have any witnesses out there um, in Sunday school, but anytime you have had a high time in God, anytime you have had an experience with God, uh, once that is over, there's always something that the enemy brings forth to get you to question where you stand at with God. It's always something to come and try and test your faith and come against you. So this is something to think about, that Moses, he's up and he's just enjoying himself, but now he got to come down, and he got to deal with these hard-head folks. Amen. These hard-head folks, these, he got to deal with the preacher he left in charge. Not just the people, but the preacher. Even the preacher was in trouble. And so what happens here? And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Minister Ramos, can you talk just a little bit about uh, what God means? He says that this is a stiff-necked people. Amen. That is a very tough word. Stiff-necked um, correlates with the meaning that they were unable to be led. Mm. Amen. They Say were that again. rebellious and stubborn people, unable to be led. So even though he has been leading them this whole time into the wilderness, taking care of them, providing for them, making a way out of no way, and then even made it so where they could not go back into bondage. He closed the waters so that they could not turn back. Even if they decided that we wanted to go back to bondage, God had already made sure that there is no way that they can get back. And now that he has directly called them stiff-necked people, the same people last week that he said, I will set thee apart and call them a peculiar nation. 
So we have to understand that we can be, like you said already, a direct, direct offense unto God, and we can come out of the will of God. So even though he called us one thing, our actions can turn around and have him call us something else. So yes, they were called. Yes, they were qualified. Yes, he had already chosen them to be his people, but their actions brought them out of the will of God. And it got so bad, Minister Ramos, that they likened this to a horse that wants to uh, go against the commands of his owner, mm -hmm. that he'll stiff up his neck to keep from going in the direction, as you said, they cannot be led, that its owner wants them to go. Mm -hmm. That's where the term comes from, being right. stiff-necked. Huh? People that can't be led. People that don't want to be led. People don't, I don't care for some folks, and no matter how much truth you preach to them, how much you try to do for them, there's some folks that just don't want to do right. There's some folks that don't want to be right. They want to continue in what they're doing, and they're okay with it. And this is where the Bible calls them stiff neck. The, the, the deacon Stephen over in the book of Acts chapter 7 even said it the same way. He said that there was a hard head folks, for these are stiff neck people who refuse to hear the gospel, who refuse to obey it, who refuse to accept Christ as their Lord and accept his free gift of salvation. Verse 10 says, now therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. So God basically tests Moses. He says, okay, Moses, let me alone. Let, 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 leave me alone. Let me go and get rid of them. Let me wax them. Let me just wax them cold. Let me just wipe them off the face of this earth. And I'm going to make you a great nation. Moses' greatest test here was if he was going to accept the royalty of having a great nation after his people being wiped out, or is he going to intercede for his people, for God to uh, repent of what he had said? And we're, we're going to find this out here. This was a test for Moses. God said, let me alone. But God is really testing Moses to see as a leader and one that has the characteristics of God, how is he going to respond to what God says? And let's move to the next verse. And Moses besought the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why doth thou wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt, and with great power, and with a mighty hand. So first thing Moses does, he reminds God what he did for his people. He, he reminds him, and not only did he bring him out, but he did it with a mighty hand. He reminds God about his children, the people that he called his own. Why would you want to consume them? Then, verse 12, he says, Wherefore should the Egyptians speak? And say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. So the next thing he does, not only does he remind God what he did for them, but now he reminds God also that the world that is watching, how they would misconstrue what is happening to them and how they would then turn and laugh at God and laugh about what's happening. And so the last thing Moses says Okay, now, Lord, turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against that people. Ain't that awesome? Amen. Ain't that awesome if you can be a kind of person that can get God to change his mind? Wow. Uh, isn't that awesome if you can have that place with God, you can have that type of favor with God, that God would change his mind? What happened with, uh, in, over, with Hezekiah? We learned about Hezekiah, the man that was sick. And, and God changed his mind. He was supposed to die, but God gave him 15 added years to his life. Isn't it awesome when you can change God's mind? Moses told the Lord, repent of this evil. Huh? This is not the first time we hear of God repenting. Amen. Huh? After the flood, it, re uh, it repented of God. God repented of himself for making man. 
It was better that he had not made man. But uh, he repented of himself because he was going to destroy man. But God turned from that evil to give man another chance. So it goes also to show the graciousness of God. All right. So turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against our people. And then, Minister Ramos, I'll let you get a little bit of this. It says, remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Meaning, the last thing he reminds God about, remember the covenant you made with them. Uh huh. Remember to see this. This is why you can't destroy them, because you promised to multiply their seed. Minister Ramos, um, you can uh, just kind of join in the conversation here. Is that God should have cut a lot of us off a long time ago, mm. but because He remembers the covenant that He made. You know, and every time I see the bow in the sky, as He mentioned in the scriptures, the rainbow in the sky, it reminds me that God has spared us yet again. Yes. Because there is no reason why we should still be on this planet, not by our mm. actions or any of our deeds. It's only by his, grace. by his grace. If he was the same God of wrath that he was back in the Old Testament, we would have all been wiped off of the exactly. face of this earth. He would have probably tried to start over with somebody a long yeah. time ago. But I thank God that he remembered the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he continues to remember that covenant. So we are still under his grace. And there is a new covenant out there that has given us exceedingly, abundantly above all oh, that we can that, ask, yeah. or, ask or think. And I thank God for that because that has delivered many of us, all of us. And so as we unfortunately serve other gods and turn to man as our savior and our deliverer and think that we have done anything to have saved this nation or saved this mm -hmm. world, we err in our thinking. That That's yeah. nothing that we have done with our own hands. You know, I'm not discrediting the, discrediting the soldiers, and we appreciate your sacrifice, but it was God that was with you. That's it was right. God that was in this nation that has brought us this far. That's right. So let's not think that there was a man, even the ones that are in, you know, in power. Yes, we pray for our president. Yes, we pray mm -hmm. for the people in yes, charge. But we have to understand they answer to an almighty God. That's right. And we have to make sure that the decisions that they make line up with the word of God. Otherwise, we suffer as a nation, that's as right. a whole. So that's why we pray for our leaders. But going back to the lesson, we see that his covenant is yet with us. And we mm -hmm. thank God that when he said, I will multiply the seeds, I remember him telling Abraham that. Mm -hmm. He said, as the multiply. sands of the sea and as the stars in the heaven, I will multiply that's you. That's what he said. Now, he also said that, Moses, I'll do this with you if you just leave me alone and let me go destroy everybody. <laughs> but again, Moses had the type of relationship with God after being on this mountain with him that mm -hmm. he said, wait, Lord, remember what you said before? Mm -hmm. Remember, I, I can't let you do this because these are the same people, the same lineage that you said that you would make great, that you would deliver them. So... I, I, I question, I don't question, I, am, uh, I adore the relationship that Moses had with God. To be able to talk to him one-on-one -on -one like that and have, have a conversation to where, where you bring God in remembrance of his word. And that's what it tells us to do. Bring God in remembrance of his word, how he has delivered you and sacrificed all that he has. He sacrificed Jesus for us. And now, because of my actions, you want to deliver me? Wait a minute, what was the sacrifice for? So I could be forgiven of my sins That's and right. given a new opportunity to do what is right in the sight of God. That, that is so awesome and well, well said. You know, we talk about in this lesson, God repents of the evil, mm -hmm. which he thought to do. He repented of the evil, which he thought to do to his people. Mm -hmm. Many times we even hear what Jonah, where God says he's going to destroy a city. Right. And then he repents because of his grace, Thank you, Lord. because of his mercy. Just like today, as God was then with his grace and mercy, we all, even today, have a mediator that we can go to. Moses was that mediator for the children of Israel. Jesus is our mediator. Amen. You know the difference with the children of Israel and us? Is that Jesus have already paid the penalty for sin. Thank you. See, Aaron and them, if you read on in the, uh, later on, they had to die. 
for their sin. They had to die because sin had to be dealt with. Jesus already paid the price. I believe it's Hebrews, the ninth chapter, somewhere in the 26th verse, says that Christ died once and once for all for the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus. That means he paid a price for you. He paid a price for me that we don't have that debt to pay. All he wants from us is a surrendered life. Amen. Amen. And so as we leave this lesson, just remember that the Lord wants from us a surrendered life. And you can see in our golden text, Psalms 9 and 10, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. He will not forsake you. Thank you Lord. Never leave you nor forsake you. We thank you for listening this morning. We are so just blessed. To, to always teach you and you know just let us know how we're doing let us know that you're growing let us know that we're helping you grow in your faith through the Sunday school you know and invite others they may not go to this church but share with them the word of God even in Sunday school Amen. that is going forth you know I want you to know that we love you you know may God bless you may God keep you and may heaven smile upon you